You're listening to Jay and Partners Atlanta Market East Drop. A quick real estate update from Jerry Metcalf Partners, real estate agents on the ground in Atlanta, talking about what it's like, what to expect, the pros, the cons, and what to consider to align yourself and your loved ones for the best opportunities. Good morning. We are live on Facebook. <laughs> Bridget Posey, Chad Corotis, Jerry Metcalf, live on Facebook for our three things to know. He's dropping on JM Partners about the Atlanta home market. It's busy. busy. Can you tell? Busy. What's that, Chad? It's busy. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> so, this week, we're talking about three things to know about offers in an extreme seller's market, which is what it is here in most markets today, or at least in the country. Um, number one, the highest price offer isn't always. Number two, what buyers are saying that they're not meaning. And number three, what to do about it. So let's start with- Trickery. Everybody's like highest price offer isn't always, what do you mean the highest price is the highest price? It's not, what do you mean it's not always? Who wants to elaborate on that and some experience with that? Well, a lot of times with the highest price offers that typically they'll, they'll start as the highest price offers. Um, and then once you go under contract, then they can either renegotiate and it becomes a lower offer or sometimes just the terms aren't always the best. So there's a lot that goes into just because it, it starts at the highest price doesn't always mean it ends as the highest price. Oftentimes, remember everybody in Georgia, our contracts are due diligence contracts, which means you have the right to terminate for any reason. Mm -hmm. And so in doing that, oftentimes the buyer just gets in because they basically have a free option. Right. Number two, what buyers are saying that they are not meaning. So we've had some encounters with some contracts and we're hearing out in the field with our colleagues that people are getting under contract and there are terms on there and they're not always getting followed through on. And the response says, well, it's a contract. What do you mean? They're like buyers are liars until they get under contract. So what about under contract? Does anybody have any examples of that? I mean, there's lots of fun examples, but basically, you know, the biggest one is that they go into it with the due diligence period. And sometimes they'll ask for it. They'll, they'll put in the contract as, as is, and then they come back and try to renegotiate or we had one recently the, where the realtor said that they would only ask for up to a certain amount and this is a great home but then all of a sudden they came back and wanted to do yeah. even more and they're you know and we understand but then we don't understand it's a lot of you know you're, you gotta be true to your word i think to reiterate that the importance in our market is as a seller when on when terms are on an offer they we, we take it at face value and how do we anticipate that may not be what it is. And we want to work with people. We want the deal to close, right. um, which comes to number three, what to do about it. So a few things, the more they have at stake, the more likely they are to stick to it. So an easy one is highest or higher earnest money. Another one is make it cash. And that doesn't mean they have to pay cash. What it really means when we say that is remove the fine. Well, instead, like in Florida in that market, when you say cash offer, it's a given. People pretty much know it, you, it's not cash. The way we phrase it in Georgia, cash typically means cash with the option to finance. But what that really means is no financing contingency and no appraisal contingency. So the buyer is taking on the risk of if they don't get financing or appraised, it's on them, which goes back to the higher earnest money they have at stake when they back out of the contract. But most importantly, something that Bridget does often in her brilliant negotiating that we thought we should share today that a lot of buyers aren't doing is offering option money for mm -hmm. the due diligence. And what does that mean? Bridget, speak to that because you're kind of the expert and this really works well. It does work well. It does work well. Um, and I do have attorneys share with me all the time that I'm one of very few agents who use this option, but it is on our contracts. Um, it was incorporated, I think, I want to say like four years ago. And I started using it almost from day one because we do have multiple offer situations at any price point right now, especially there are, 
I mean, we've heard attorneys tell us that they have seen as many as over 40 offers on a property. And when agents aren't using the option money because they either don't know how or they don't know how it's going to work or they don't want to put their their clients money on the line they don't stand out and one way you can stand out because that seller's that money goes directly into the seller's bank account so what let's talk about directly what, to the seller. what option option money is literally buying the right to buy the house or in this case it's saying i will give you money for my due diligence period so that if i terminate that money's gone. That money's yours. And it gives the sellers, it puts you at a whole nother level in their mind because they even say to their agent, wait, I get this money now? This goes in my bank account? Yes, that check is written directly to the seller. So, and yeah. they can come back to the buyer if they buy the house. If they walk away, it's gone. Exactly. And in that, it is, the other thing is a shorter due diligence. Mm -hmm. Is when you put in a shorter due diligence, you pay, you pay for the due diligence. Now you've got a buyer that's serious about it. And as buyers, you need to be serious if you're doing that. And as sellers, it's a great way to navigate through these multiple offers because terminations are more common in this market it, despite other markets. They're extremely common. We don't have an easy way to pull those stats, but it would be interesting to try to figure out the percentage of terminations right now. Exactly. Well, there, yeah, and here's some numbers just to run everybody through on the market. So we've been giving the general Atlanta market, but we're gonna run through, thanks to Chad's advice. Thank you, Chad. We deal very much in the million plus market. So we're gonna share, we wanna share stats because it's interesting the comparisons between the two markets. So we've got supply in the general market of Atlanta has gone from three months this time last year to one month this time this year, which is March to March. And when we look at the number of listings, actually we don't have the numbers on the number of listings or do we? We don't have the number of listings in the average market, but this is interesting, the multi-million dollar market. Over a million, the numbers are 1300 were for sale this time last year. Right now there are 920 for sale, even though the number of properties selling has gone from 90 to 132 in the million plus market. I mean, that is a significant drop in the number of listings of what is, that is one third, a 33% drop. And yet we've got the same increase in the number of sales. So talk about some serious demand driving prices. Um, but speaking back to that, just that gives you guys a good idea of like, this is what we're dealing with in the market, whether it's the million plus dollar market or the average market. And in that market, be aware of what your offer means as a buyer and what you can do to secure it. And as a seller, the same thing. How do you know you've got the best offer? Make sure the highest priced offer is the highest priced offer. Make sure we structure the contracts that the buyer, the buyers are going to deliver on what they're putting in there. And they're and, able to deliver as well. Say that again, Chad. They're able to deliver. Right. Yeah. You had exactly. mentioned even checking with if they, even though they're coming in as cash, you still want to make sure that they're check with the lenders, have that more than just your pre-qualification letter. Any market, right? uh, well, yeah. that's true in any market you should be, but it's well, when you're, when you're doing things, so quick. And so you want to make sure you're making all the right calls. Yeah. And shorter due diligences, higher earnest money, removing contingencies, financing and appraisal and paying for the option, mm -hmm. definitely rewrite the story of how these contracts transpire. And in that taking into consideration we talked before we recorded in these deals, how you adjust each of those terms always depends on the seller and the buyer in every situation. Kind of like, I like the helicopter analogy. When, you know, pulling the levers on the plane or the car or the helicopter, you've got to pull the levers according to the deal to secure it to close with the best terms possible. The levers. <laughs> Who in here, does any, I mean, I don't even like know how to fly a plane. I can barely drive a car. Does it even say levers? A couple of levers. Taking levers. Maybe levers is like myself, Georgia. Is it a, it, yeah, I don't know. I was, I just, when, when you were saying it earlier and you said lever like 12 times, I was like, how many times? I'm gonna, like, <laughs> like lever, 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 lever. It's like pecan or pecan. It might be lever, but who cares? Go with it. <laughs> God, I can't take it back. It is live. I love it. This is why we go live. JMP. 
Is it pronounced lever or lever? Who are you asking? <laughs> I'm asking Google. Vote here. Google, Google says the answer is simple. Lever and lever are the same. Wait, how did you They're type not. that? Did you, did you say, is it pronounced L-E-V-E-R or L-E-V-E-R? <laughs> <laughs> you love the new pronunciations. That's what I mean. What's that? I don't know. We're... We're still live on Facebook <laughs> talking about whether it's leave or eleven. We are. Let's talk about something funny before we leave. We're going to have to Friday. It's Friday. It's finally spring. Yeah. We didn't have any tornadoes last night, so we can, we're going to have a pretty Friday. Enjoy the pretty Friday before storms come back again on Saturday. Is it going to be nice? That's good. There's a tornado I heard last night in North Georgia. There were tornadoes? Yeah. And yeah. everybody listening from LA and everybody from California is always afraid of the tornadoes. Earthquakes are worse, right? <laughs> I guess that all depends. That's I guess it depends. <laughs> or snowstorms. Those are the worst. What's that, Chad? Snowstorms. Wait, say it again. Snowstorms. No, snowstorms. Those snowstorms are bad in Atlanta because we don't know how to handle it. Well, We're snowstorms not bad. are bad because we, yeah, that's like a whole, that could even turn political. Right, like we don't pay for the equipment because we don't need it except once every twenty years, and what would that do for taxes and storage? Well, all fairness, they probably don't. But then we have snow apocalypse, and everything goes. And we wired. Like, well, now we just do everything on Zoom anyway. That's true. Um, so let's start a whole new podcast for that. There you go. We can talk to all the beautiful trees that Lena has right now. Exactly. Well, we're all sitting in our listings, by the way, everybody. Yes. Oh, I'm at 840 Henry Court. 840 Henry, and I'm in the sample shot for 840 Henry before it was complete. So. Chad's in the Holiday House. Yeah. Good, everybody, to talk to you. Remember, we've got lots of listings on market, off market, and buyers, we're ready for you. Next week, we're talking about pools. Oh, yes. Next week, we will be talking about pools. Everybody wants a pool. Everybody, and everybody wants, wants a house with a pool. But what if it doesn't have a pool? This house needs a pool. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're putting a pool in that house. And on the pools, y'all just wait in here. But it's a, a lot of people are afraid of putting in pools right now. They just want the house with the pool. But there's a lot of benefits to putting them in for yourself. So right. you know, we, Stay tuned. Stay tuned to the three things to know. Eavesdropping on JM Partners. Bye, right. Thanks, Jerry. Bye, Bridget. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to the JM Partners Atlanta Market Eavesdrop. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and share with your friends who might be moving or who just want to keep up with the latest on the Atlanta residential market. You can find us anytime online at jmpartners.io. That's jmpartners.io.